So what's going on guys and welcome back to episode number 2 of our Spurs career mode and as you see here we are going to be starting this episode simming the final of the pre-season competition that we are in. As you can see we are going to be playing up against Monterey, the squad we're going to be going with is going to be uh, Torres and Imbola are going to be starting through the middle, uh, Lamella on the right, Eriks on the left and then behind them we have uh, Ali and also Eric Dyer, and behind them we have probably one of our best lineups. I'm still not sure whether to go with Davies or Danny Rose at the left foot position. Let me know in the comments down below whether you think I should buy Dave, uh, whether you think I should play Davies or Danny Rose. Let me know in the comments down below as I think they're both as good as each other. So we're going to go ahead, sim this game, and hopefully we can get the result that we desperately need to give us a little bit more funds. As you see, they did in fact lose 4-0 um, against Fiorentina. Hopefully we can win, pick up the win. Yes, we can. Vertonghen, Lamella and Eriksson all picking up the goals. We also got a red card, but I don't think that red card really matters um, because I don't think that continues into the league. But we've got a few uh, emails here. Angel Correa has accepted his contract. Felipe Anderson, they said they want 21 million, which is a hell of a lot of money. Uh, Crystal Palace, they want 7 million for Balassi. We get an extra 2.7 million, which is good to see. Um, which, uh, player suspended, so Alderweireld has picked up a one-match ban. So maybe it does continue into the Premier League. But we're going to go ahead and offer Felipe Anderson a um, deal because I think this guy could be an absolute incredible player if we could bring him in. I think if we go ahead and offer around about 18 million, he will definitely be probably the starting left uh, winger if we do bring him in, uh, especially now Chadley has left the club. We still haven't received the money for Chadley yet, so I don't know whether transfer talks have broken down between the clubs. I'm not 100% sure. We're also going for Balassi, but I would prefer Anderson than Balassi, but I have to wait and see first. Um, also, Korea, do we want to bring him in? Do we want to spend 15 million and bring in yet another striker, or will Mbolo be good enough along with NG? So we have got a transfer offer here for Ryan Mace for 3.6 million from Newcastle. I will go ahead and up it to 4.75 uh, million. If Newcastle go ahead and accept that, we will happily let Ryan Mason leave the club as we've got plenty of backups as well. We're also going for um, Pont Promise, but they want 28 million and Saido Mane, they want 15.5. So it's a lot of money people are wanting here for their players. So thankfully for us, we have now received the money. £12 million has been allocated to our transfer budget, so we can go ahead and now bring in that extra player, especially I would like to bring in Felipe Anderson. Also, uh, Rugani saying he doesn't want to relocate, but could be persuaded, so we're going to have to go ahead, offer him a 70000 a year contract, and we will offer him an important first-team player. Hopefully, the 20-year-old centre-back from Juventus will go ahead and accept. Julian Brand, they said they want around £10 million, so we're not going to be paying £10 million for a player of his quality even though he's going to be good in the future I don't want to be splashing out that much cash right early on um Crystal Palace also come back and say they will only accept a £7 million bid for Yannick Balassi, but Lazio have accepted an £18 million bid for Felipe Anderson and this guy looks like an absolute monster he's around about 70 high 70 rated and I do know he has got potential of about 87 88 so this guy could be an absolute monster up top for us and hopefully um, he will be able to definitely take the place of Nasser Chadli. So the transfer offer has also been accepted for Kinsey Promise from Spartak Mosto, 20 million. So we offered 8 million under what they wanted for him and they have in fact gone ahead and accepted it. So what I will do, I will offer him an important first team player to come into the squad. Uh, also Newcastle say they've decided to match the 4.75 million bid for Ryan Mason. So maybe we're going to have to look at maybe bringing in another centre midfielder or whether we've got good enough centre midfielders even even though we sell him, I'm not sure. Uh, Southampton say they still want 15.5 million for Sadio Mane, but I don't think I will be getting him unless um, transfer talks break down between us and the Lazio winger, but I'm not very sure they will do. Uh, Rugani once again saying he loves living there, so he doesn't want to be going. So 80,000, this is a lot of money now. 5% uh, 5 clean sheet bonus, and he will be once again an important first team player. I do really want to bring in Daniel Rugani because I think he could be a star for the future. So as you see there, the player has also been sold to Newcastle. So Ryan Mason has left the club, unfortunately for us, but he has been allocated four million for our transfer budget. And great news for us here, Felipe Anderson has accepted his contract. We are gonna go ahead and accept him into the club and we've still got 25 million left to spend on another player. Obviously 10 million of that I do believe will be going on Rugani if he eventually accepts his contract. And now I think maybe we can maybe look for that one more centre defensive mid, which I think could be Ruben Neves. 
And actually here we've got loads of different emails here. We've got a transfer offer for Jan Vertonghen from Crystal Palace. And I'm sorry guys, you are not going to take Jan Vertonghen whatsoever um, as I believe he will be our vice captain for the club as well. Southampton do in fact accept the 12.5 million bid for Sadio Mane. So what we do, we go ahead and offer him a contract. It, even if he don't, even if he accepts it, we don't have to go ahead and accept it anyway. Maybe we don't want to bring him into the club, but he does look a very good uh, second striker. Kinsey Proms also accepts his contract, and uh, Rugani accepts his contract as well. So thankfully for us, Rugani has now come to the club, and we've now been left with 15 million to spend on another player. I don't want Promise anymore because now we've got Anderson. So do we go ahead and buy Sadio Mane? Or do we spend 15 million on another player or maybe keep it until January? I'm not sure. And we've also got, now got a transfer offer accepted for 6 million for um, Bazor. This could be a fantastic deal if we could pull this one off. I believe he's around about 75 rated, but he has got very good potential. And in theory, it's only going to cost us an extra 2 million. Because as you know, we did sell Ryan Mason for 4 million. So that 4 million, we've only going to got to put 2 million of our own money to it. And we could bring in Bazor, who was a lot younger. Also, Ruben Neves, they say they want um, 6.5 million for. So if we offer 5.5, which is 1 million less than his valuation, maybe that will convince Porto to let the youngster go. Then who do we choose? Bazor or Neves? Neves or Bazor? We'll have to think about it. So we've now got a transfer offer for Hugo Lloris from AC Milan. Unless they're going to pay £68 million, pounds, I'm afraid, our French goalkeeper and captain will not be leaving the club, whatever happens. Hugo will be staying. So Bazor has accepted his contract, but Porto have also accepted um, the transfer for Ruben Neves. So what we're going to do, we're going to offer them both contracts. As you know, Bazor has already accepted his, but then we'll decide whether we want Ruben Neves or Bazor. We have to think about it. So actually there, Ruben Neves has also accepted his contract, but I have decided to go ahead and uh, accept Bazor into the club because I think he will be the all-round centre midfielder, which I desperately need. Ruben Neves, unfortunately, I can't actually afford him, as you can see there, but I don't want to bring in too many centre uh, midfielders, otherwise we're just going to be overloaded with them. We've already got Deli Ali, who will probably be a first-team player anyway, but Bazor, even though he's a higher rated, I'm not sure whether I'm going to play him or not um, as a first-team player. I haven't... I've offered him an important first team player, but I'm not having to short at this moment in time. We've also accepted a bid for um, Federico Fazio. We're going to counter off it uh, to 5 million, so basically just 200,000 over his valuation. And hopefully, Crystal Palace will go ahead and match that, and then we can see the back of Federico Fazio. But it looks like we're going to be jumping into our first game of the episode before we accept this bid here for Joe Pritchard. He will be leaving the club. He's only 55 rated, and he's only 18 years of age, but I don't think he's going to have a few future at Tottenham Hotspur so I think that should be it uh, we have a transfer offer for Sanupe he can go out on loan to uh, Oxford United for just a one-year loan but now it is time to jump into our first game of the Barclays Premier League season which is going to be a really difficult game up against Manchester United but before we do so we're going to have a look at the squad report because we have moved into a new month so hopefully players would have started to progress so it's always good to see when you've got the green arrows next to them so it's good to see there that Delhi Ali has gone up Eric Dyer has gone up Eric Lamella has gone up to an 80 rated now which is great to see Oliver Torres is also an 80 rated Mbola unfortunately isn't nor is Sebalos Michel Vaughan has actually gone up to an 81 rated which is very surprising uh, Clinton and G's always stayed the same. Uh, let's see if anyone else has gone up. I doubt it. Actually, there, Bazor looks like an absolute monster in the centre midfield. Look at them physical and technical stats. He looks like an absolute beast in the centre midfield role. Rugani as well, 21 years of age, 20, uh, 21 years of age, and 78 rated overall. Looks very promising as well. Apart from that, I don't think there's going to be many more players that have progressed. Apart from Harry Kane, even though he's injured, he's actually gone up a rating. Felipe Anderson, look at this guy. This is the big money guy. We spent 18 million pounds on this guy and he's got incredible technical stats look at that acceleration look at the sprint speed and agility this guy hopefully could be banging in goals left right and center all season long and just Townsend's also gone up as well uh, Federico Fazio has actually gone up to 78 rated now which is um even though I'm gonna be selling him it's still nice to see that players are starting to progress so we're gonna jump into our first game before that we've got to sort out what we believe is gonna be our strongest starting lineup so as you can see this is in fact going to be the starting lineup 
for the first game of the season away from home against Manchester United at Old Trafford. We are going to be going with Hugo Lloris in goal, the back four of Walker, Alderweire, Vertonghen and Davies. Just in front of them, we're going to go with the young guys. We're going to go with um, Deli Ali and uh, Eric Dyer. And in front of them, we're going to have Ericsson. On the right, we're going to have Lamella. On the left, we're going to have Felipe Anderson. And up top, we're going to have Mbolo, mainly because um, Harry Kane is unfortunately injured. But hopefully, he'll be back very soon. Fantastic chance for Deli Ali. He's played through Ericsson. Fantastic block. Eli Deli Ali strikes it from range. But it was Deli Blind that launched himself in front of the ball. And they managed to get the ball clear. But Ericsson's going to whip the ball in the box here. Can someone get their head on it? We go up. We get our head on it. Unfortunately, it just goes wide of the post. But we have, in fact, been given another corner. Christian Eriksen, once again, the free kick specialist whips it in. And we've been given another corner. So the set piece specialist is really causing Manchester United some trouble here. He's going to whip the ball in once again. Low ball. This time we try and get near it but this time uh, Victor Valdez does in fact cover the ball and um, they do in fact get the ball clear out of harm's way but I'm surprised here that uh, Victor Valdez is starting the game instead of David De Gea. Good chance here for United they play the ball through but thankfully Kyle Walker uses pace to catch up with Memphis Depay and we get the ball clear through Delhi Ali who plays the ball to Lamella but unfortunately Luke Shaw depossesses Lamella as he runs down the wing they're causing many problems here down the left hand side unfortunately Kyle Walker as I mentioned in one of the first episodes he is very good at going forward but defending with it back to goal he's not the best defender in the world but um, going forward he will cause a real threat we're giving the ball away very poorly with the Delhi Ali they shoot Delhi Blind has a shot but thankfully for us Jam Vertonghen and steps in as he actually he is actually our captain for the day but I think I will be handing the captain's armband back to Hugo Lloris very soon but hopefully we can get that ball clear a fantastic um, control there from Phil Jones their centre back they play the ball in to Morgan Snyderlin and they're really causing trouble they come inside Phil Jones once again he's turned our man they play the ball through they've hit the post can we get the ball clear Christian Eriksen plays the ball to Dyer and we get the ball clear and now Mbolo's on the break here can he get a chance unfortunately not and Manchester United deep sets of the ball Good chance for United here, they play the ball through and they have a fantastic volley from Anton Valencia and he nearly puts it past Joris but thankfully for us his shot just had a little bit too much power on it and it went blazing over the bar but Manchester United proving very very dangerous on the counters. Good ball through to Christian Eriksen here, he's found Felipe Anderson out on the wing, can he cause any problems, he's cut inside past Rojo, he keeps on going, can he score a goal on his debut? Unfortunately he can't, Victor Valdez makes a save and his shot was very poor actually, it went straight at him. The ball from Eric Romero over the top here. Mbola has been played through. Can he get there before Rojo? Unfortunately, he can't. The Argentinian defender gets there just before Mbolo, but he does clear the ball very nervously here. And we've started the second half expertly here. And uh, hopefully, we can try and get a good result or maybe get that all important, crucial goal to get us 1 0 up. Mbola has got the ball here. Can he cause something? He's run past a few men here. Can he keep on going? That's surely a penalty. The referee's point to the penalty spot. And we have been given a lifeline in the 62nd minute. Mbola has been tripped up by Luke Shaw. And uh, as you see there, a clear-cut penalty. He tries to get the ball. He miscalculates his challenge. Mbola goes to ground. And it is going to be... Who's going to take it? It's going to be Eric Lamella up against Victor Valdez to score the penalty. Hopefully, Lamella can come on top. He's going to go to the top right-hand corner. Can we score the penalty? Yeah, no, we can't. Valdez has made a fantastic save. I thought it was in, but he pushed it onto the post, and we've missed our clear-cut opportunity. Fantastic ball through to Felipe Anderson. He back kills it to him, and he goes to ground, and it looks like he could be injured here, um, but it was actually offside. Hopefully, that's not a bad injury, and it looks like it was just a fake alarm. Bad mistake here from the Manchester United defender. We're going to try and whip the ball in. Unfortunately for us, uh, Sluke Shaw gets there just before Lamella can whip the ball in the box, but Christian Eriksen is going to whip it in. Can someone get their head on it? We do get our head, but unfortunately, it's not good enough contact. It looks like they're going to get the ball clear, but can we launch our one last attack? We're in the 80 fifth minute now but uh, we are really dominating the game but we cannot seem to get the clear cut opportunity but we find Ericsson here Ericsson's turned his man Ericsson's going to cut inside which he has done expertly can he find the back of the net he shoots and uh, Victor Valdez once again making a good save and it looks like that could be it for the game now but Mbolo here he's taken on a few men surely that's got to be a free kick but he, Mbolo's kept on going he's cut inside hopefully we can get a corner no it looks like that should be it now and we're going to end up drawing our first game nil nil and unfortunately for us we ended up missing a penalty with Lamella as well. So that is in fact it for the game. Not the best of performances from our eyes. Um, up top we were really lacking quality. 
Brett and Bolo didn't play well in my opinion. Eric Lamella didn't either. My man of the match definitely goes to Eric Dyer. He was really solid at the back. Um, and I thought Eric Lamella, even though he missed the penalty, he didn't put in the worst performance in the world, but it's got to be better from his standards. And great news as well, Federico Fazio, or uh, like better I should say, uh, that Crystal Palace have decided to go ahead and match the deal for £5 million for Federico Fazio, so it looks like he will be on his way out of the club. So we've now got another transfer offer for Jamba Tongan, and we're just going to accept all offers because I'm afraid this guy will not be leaving the club whatever happens. So now we're going to move into our second and final game of this episode which is going to be at White Hart Lane up against Stoke. We are going to be taking a slight risk in this game as Harry Kane has only just come back from injury but we are going to be starting him because in my opinion Mbolo didn't really do much in the last game and we need some more physical presence up top and I believe Harry Kane will be able to offer that to us. If he can only last 45 minutes, he can only last 45 minutes but we will then um, obviously bring on Mbolo Bolo or maybe bring on NG. Good chance for Felipe Anderson here, he's taken on loads of people, he kept on going and unfortunately he tried to do too much and he got depossessed from the ball but we do get a good chance here from the throw in, can we find someone, we're going to find um, Kyle Walker here, he's going to use his pace, surely going to be able to whip the ball in the box, he does do and he wins us a corner in the process so Ericsson the set piece specialist is going to whip it in low across, Jack Button comes out and he collects very well. Good chance here for Stoke, they play the ball to the back post and somehow they caught us on the counter attack and John Walters puts the ball over the bar but thankfully for us uh, I think Hugo Juris might have had that one covered. The ball through here to Harry Kane, can he find Lamella at the back post? He's whipped the ball through but unfortunately it gets depossessed from Cameron and that was a very crucial interception there otherwise Eric Lamella would have been played through one on one with the goalkeeper but unfortunately for us Harry Kane I think with a player of his quality, he should have found that ball. The ball inside here to Harry Kane. He's taken on his man. Can Harry Kane find the back of the net? Surely he get pushed out of the way there. And Harry Kane is appealing for it, but the referee doesn't seem to be interested. I thought that at first glance looked like a clear-cut penalty, but we got another good chance here. Ericsson's going to hit it from range. He strikes it, and it just goes over the bar. Butland, I think, might have been... I don't know whether he knew that was definitely going over, because that was pretty close in the end. Harry Kane's played the ball through to Eric Lamella. He tries to through... Fred through Felipe Anderson who goes in, Jack Butler's depossessed, it comes back to Kane and how has that ball stayed out? Harry Kane, his form in real life is reflecting into the game here, Jack Butler makes a mistake, we shoot, it gets saved by Butler and then he comes back in and now he's redeemed himself with a fantastic save from Jamba Tonga's header but we do come very close there and the player of Harry Kane's quality has to be hit in the back of the net there. Good ball through to Felipe Anderson. Can he create a chance for himself here? He's cut inside. Can he find the back post? He shoots. But it's a good block from the Stoke um, defender there. And unfortunately for us, Anderson hasn't really found himself at home here at Tottenham so far this season. Um, obviously, he's only played his second. This is only his second game, but he ha doesn't seem to have settled down at London yet. Oh dear. Hugo Lloris has made a mistake. I would never have thought I'd be saying that so early on the season. Hugo Lloris comes out for the cross and he just lets it float straight over his head. Um, as you see there, poor defending from um, Kyle Walker. But Hugo Lloris, what is he doing? He come out for the cross, let the ball just drift over his head. And it's a clear header into the back of the net from Juf. Hugo Lloris, for my eyes, was at fault for that goal. They're so going to make three substitutions here. Oliver Torres is going to come on at Cam. We're going to bring Clinton on up top and we're also going to bring on Sevelos. So we're going to try and bring on some speed through Clinton. Hopefully he can try try and create that last chance, of hopefully, to try and savage a pawn from this game. Good ball through here to Christian Eriksen. Can we get something? Unfortunately, he's just too tired and it looks like that is going to be it for the game unless we can try and savage something here. In the two minutes from the end, we've eventually had enough time now to bring on our substitutes. Christian Eriksen is going to whip the ball in the box. Can someone get their head on it? It comes in, Jack Butland's come out and that is commanding goalkeeping. He's collected the ball. Hopefully, we can win that with Davies, which he hasn't, but Kyle Walker's surely going to get to that and uh, hopefully, we can launch our one last attack. Unfortunately, we have not been given enough time to launch at one last attack and we have lost our second game of the season at home against Stoke. Awful, awful performance from us. As to that, I don't know who to give man of the match to because it was just so bad. Um, I would actually give it to probably Christian Eriksen, probably the only player trying to create anything. Kyle Walker was awful and Yoris, I never thought I'd say it, 
was not good today. So that is in fact going to be it for this episode. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to hit the like button down below as it's going to be very much appreciated. And also, let me know in the comments down below what you want me to do with the remaining £15 million that I have got. Do you want me to sign another player or do I keep it until January? Let me know in the comments down below as that would be very much appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.